hello everyone, welcome to the Data Vault podcast, your home for everything Data Vault connected. I'm Neil Strange, I'm the CEO of Data Vault, a uh, leading Data Vault consultancy and implementer. And I'm joined today by Alex Higgs, our Automate DV product manager, um, to discuss uh, getting started on Data Vault. So, welcome, Alex. Thank you. Hi, Neil. Well, this is an interesting topic, I think, and I'm sure we've got plenty to say on the matter. Uh, but let me start by asking, you know, what what are the typical uh, issues you see with people trying to get started with Data Vault? Thanks, Neil. So, I think some people often find uh, a few barriers to being able to start off with Data Vault, mm-hmm. and Usually that's buy-in in the organization, um, upskilling, sort of learning about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, few, there's a, quite a few other things as well. And that can either deter t- people from the method or just uh, make it take longer for people to get started with it. Okay. So where do people typically start then? Obviously, they may have had a, a frustrations with their existing platform that they've got, looking for something else out there that can meet the future needs see data vault out there read a bit into it find a bit of interest but i don't think anything beats having getting some practical hands-on experience out there no, exactly i mean uh, you know as a developer <laughs> i i quite often find just downloading something and trying it and getting mm-hmm. getting um stuck into it uh, very valuable really okay and I, I don't i don't think there's anything mysterious about data vault really it's just just getting some practice in it and understanding the concepts so, as, same with everything really um yeah. so i mean where would you start then if you were you're going to do that i think obviously you get a copy of the um the data vault book that's out yep. there um, and um, um, reading into that but again that's a bit theoretical so um, where could you get hold of some tooling and stuff to use okay so uh, of course there's automate db available which is a free package uh, for dbt that allows you to uh, you can install it and get started mm-hmm. uh, hands-on developing the the code um, you only need to provide the metadata, but because it's open, you can see exactly all the SQL that's um, generated behind the scenes mm-hmm. and understand exactly what's going on. But doesn't that run DBT? Do you need a license for DBT or something like that? No, so there's two versions. You've got DBT Core, which is the Python library. That's that's free. You can download that. It's just a Python package. There's also uh, DBT Cloud, which there are enterprise versions, but it's free forever for one in, for one user, okay. for an individual. So you can, you can install that. Uh, well, you don't need to install it, but you can create an account and get started with it. Yeah. And automate DBs are like a package that runs on DBT, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, what about databases? I mean, commonly um, we see uh, people working with things like Snowflake mm-hmm. nowadays. Is that, that, that supported? And how do we get involved with that as well? Yeah, so automate DB currently supports uh, five uh, platforms, two of which are Snowflake and Postgres. Mm-hmm. So Snowflake offers a uh, free 30-day or $400 uh, uh, trial whichever runs out first, 30 days or $400, um, which is a really good way of getting started. Mm-hmm. Uh, Postgres is also free and open source itself. So you can download that, set up a Postgres server and, and develop on Postgres if you want to. Okay, so I get a, get a free license from Snowflake for, for trial purposes. Yep. I get a one you know, it's free user license with mm-hmm. DBT, put up the D- Automate DB package. Exactly. Wonderful. I've got the book. Yep. What do I do next? <laughs> well, so uh, Automate DB, we have a worked example. Um, okay. So you, there's on GitHub again, open, um, free to download and use. Uh, we've got a uh, s- sample project that you can that's got all the DBC files ready for you to get started with, and a, and a walkthrough guide to explain how everything works and what it's doing. Okay, okay, yeah. and there's plenty of um, videos out there. I think on YouTube. You yeah. Check our YouTube channel, um, which will provide contact details for um, hopefully as a subtitle to this. And um, uh, yes, and that will give you a, a starter on there. And I know there's uh, a full support uh, or full documentation on Read the Docs as well. So yeah. we get a lot of good comments back on that as well as to how well that's supported. Okay, so um, that will get you um, up and started. Um, plenty of support materials around there. I think by the end of that process, you'll at least have a fairly good idea of what's involved in doing a Data Vault project. Um, maybe in a position to decide whether or not that's uh, more suitable for you and um, give you the groundings to request for funding for, for formal training or, or looking at some of the other products out in the marketplace. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, lovely, thank you. So um, you. Um, that's been an interesting topic. That's all for today. Um, we've been uh, Alex Higgs and Neil Strange um, of Data Vault, and we've been talking about uh, getting started on Data Vault. Don't forget to check out the Data Vault user group uh, on our regular meetups. Um, sign up for a mailing list if you want to be reminded um, of these events. And um, check out our website, uh, datavault.com, 
and automatedv.com. Um, if you've got any topics you'd like us to talk on in the future, then please get in touch um, or leave a comment below. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.